Um, so I'm saying um, I graduated from University of Toronto in, uh, in 2003. Uh, so I've been practicing for 18, 19 years now. Um, I'm the manager uh, and uh, education training and development lead for CBI Health, um, which is currently the largest, um, from what I understand, the largest healthcare company in North America now, actually. I practice in Oak Ridges in an outpatient clinic focusing on orthopedics, so um, sports, um, joint and muscle issues. And I practice uh, acupuncture, dry needling, and uh, a large portion of my uh, caseload uh, involves sports rehab, specifically uh, golf golfers as well. Uh, physio in general can also uh, specialize, I don't do this, but other physiotherapists can specialize in cardiovascular or cardio um, pulmonary rehabilitation uh, and neurology. So people post-stroke uh, as well as oncology and post-cancer as well. So October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and uh, we are doing a virtual event where uh, the end goal is to collectively take a million steps for hope for breast cancer. So we basically, we have what we call crusaders. Our goal is to have 100 crusaders 10,000 steps each on the 31st to come together marching for hope. And during the entire month, what we do is we do educational posts, uh, awareness posts, as well as we wear pink, and we also we raise money for breast cancer. Have you ever worked with anybody who's recovered from cancer treatment? Mm -hmm. Just a half. And are you, are you able to share any of the experiences? Is it different than working with your regular patients? So it varies depending on whether I'm seeing them specifically for their rehab for, for cancer, mm -hmm. or if it's or cancer is just a byproduct and I'm treating them for a typical musculoskeletal thing. Like they could have back pain or leg pain or knee pain from maybe some sort of regular injury and they are a cancer survivor or they have active cancer now in which case we have to take that into consideration when we're creating a treatment plan. Mm -hmm. okay. So with cancer, uh, if it's an active cancer, obviously we have to be much more careful in terms of the treatment that we usually can and can't do. So we wouldn't be able to do things like ultrasound or TENS machine or anything that involves passing energy into the body okay. because that's um, promoting cell growth and oh. cell healing. That's what those machines yes. are used for. So we obviously we got to be mindful of that so that we're not adding any energy or promoting growth in someone uh, who has cancer cells or who's going through cancer. If we're coming out of, say, a post-cancer treatment uh, where you've gone for, through chemo or radiation, um, then we have to take into consideration your, your energy levels, your uh, how much food intake that you're capable of doing now. And so a lot of those people tend to be uh, weaker, uh, have... Um, less energy, less endurance, and so we have to sort of alter treatment plans to batch, to best match their current situation. Mm -hmm. So it's safe to say that even during their cancer treatments, they eat, the mindset is to continue promoting a healthy lifestyle, so they should exercise a, according to their doctor's recommendations. Correct. So a lot of it has to do with, with their tolerance. So obviously, you know, activity is good for anybody, regardless of, of the situation that you're in, but we may not start them off in the gym or with the, the highest expectations we might, to, we might need to start a little bit lower or introduce exercises in a much more graded or paced way so that they don't burn themselves out, burn themselves or tire themselves out do you find that a lot of people are hesitant to come in during their cancer treatment or they're they're ready to go uh, I, yeah I think again it, it depends on the education that they've received from if their oncologist or the family physician or their surgeon or whoever it is has said hey the best thing for you to do is actually activity um, regardless even though you're here then yes we can do that now there are certain types of cancers where uh, activity is to be avoided because we know that it might make the situation worse but if we're dealing with uh, maybe uh, a cancer that was caught earlier on or a cancer that doesn't uh, change their uh, physical, uh, the way that they perform physically, uh, then most of them coming in and have a good understanding that exercise and activity is what they actually need. Okay, thank yeah. you. Uh, have you ever worked with anyone who um, was coming in from either before or after a mastectomy? Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so after a mastectomy, uh, physio is the number one thing that that you need to. So after mastectomy, I would say after, uh, of course, your, your cancer medications or anything to get rid of the last little bit, uh, physio is the most important thing to regain full range of motion for your shoulder. Mm -hmm. It's almost as second nature as if you get your knee replaced, you got to go for physio. You get a mastectomy, you got to go for physio. Do you have patients who come in 
prior to their surgery, prior to the operation, to prepare, or do you have any suggestions on what they could do to prepare for surgery? Uh, yeah, so in the, in the MSK world, so musculoskeletal world, if you're gonna get a hip or knee replacement, or shoulder surgery, if like rotator cuff, um, pre-op is what we call it, pre-op physio is part of the rehab process. Okay. So you go see a surgeon and the surgeon says, okay, I'm gonna do your surgery on December 1st, as of November, four weeks before your surgery, you're going to attend physiotherapy so they can start teaching you exercises and movements that you're going to do after the surgery. Oh, okay. So okay. it's all to prepare for after. So it's not, Correct. It's not, it's not so much to get your muscles, um, you know, uh, you know, in better shape. Uh, part of it is. So the, the, the more movement you have and the stronger you are previous to the surgery, the faster yeah. you're going to recover after the surgery. Mm. Okay. But that's because we're replacing a joint in your knee or your hip or your shoulder. Uh, and so we're trying to maximize the function, if that makes sense, okay. okay? For a mastectomy, we're actually removing something and not replacing it with anything else. And we're not even replacing a joint or a contractile tissue. Uh, the breast tissue is non-contractile and it's, it's just there. So pre-op in the mastectomy world uh, isn't as popular or uh, there is no process right now for that usually they come in afterwards and then we just try to maximize their movement the shoulder that we're actually trying to move is just happens to be a byproduct of tightness from removing the breast but the breast tissue itself isn't the issue it's you're just afraid to move the arm because mm -hmm. it's connected to the same tissues in mm -hmm. the same yeah area but yeah no that makes sense i mean yeah. the, the fear is definitely I mean, I remember having my, after having my C-section, I was already afraid of, oh, if I bend backwards, I'm going to rip my stitches. What right? if I cough? What if I sneeze? Yeah, like, oh my goodness, exactly. like, what am I going to do, right? So it's, it's, it's a lot more education and showing people that it's safe, mm -hmm. but there's also a short window when the incision around the area is, is healing that if scar tissue starts to form and we don't get the, move, the shoulder moving prior to that scar tissue formation, they may never regain that full range. That's really scary. Oh, the shoulder, yeah. Wow, so the education aspect of it is so important then, mm -hmm. to really maximize the range of motion, future, in, in, you know, like um, future quality of life, really. Correct. Now, right. the, I'm not saying that they'll never get it back. It, it'll be much, much harder to regain it back. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like you already form bad habits, you have scar tissue there. It's gonna, there's gonna be a physical barrier on top of any psychosocial or, or fear barriers to moving or using that, that shoulder or arm. Because we are specifically talking about breast cancer this month, how long after surgery would they start recommending physio? Or is it case by case? I, I think there is a standardized policy and procedure. The, the nature of our, so we see more of the joint replacement and, and shoulder stuff. Mastectomy wise, I have to be honest, physios see them a lot. At the clinic here, we might see one a year only. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I don't know the protocol. Is there a difference for the type of exercise that you should be doing if it's chemo versus radiation? It's similar exercises. We're talking about mastectomies. Um, the the same the same sort of exercises. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, if someone is about to start, like they just been recently diagnosed, they've been a client review, and they you know talking to you about it, and there's like, okay, is there anything extra I should do in order to prepare my body? For the upcoming so they they've had the mastectomy or no not yet no, they, they haven't had just it. been diagnosed and they know that they'll be going through either chemo or radiation um, plus potential mastectomy later on in the future are there any set of exercises or type of exercises like um, like yoga based exercises or would you recommend um, like release work or or you know just daily walking and cardio to make sure their health is strong like. Yeah, so there's, um, it depends on, on the cancer, what stage it is, and how far they're along. Mm -hmm. uh, they catch, obviously, you know, the earlier you catch any sort of cancer, obviously the, the, the better it is and the better your outcomes are. So if it's a, if we caught it very early on and we're talking like stage, stage one very early, um, we don't, we don't change anything. We just want to say every, you do everything that you're supposed to do and try and maintain your normal activity levels and do everything that you, that you need to do normally. You may not even have any and again, you're not going to present with, say, shoulder stiffness because of, of that. Yeah, you're not going to present with, you're going to present with pain, obviously, um, but you're trying to do your best to exercise mm -hmm. actively through there. You brought up a good point about like mindfulness or yoga, anything that has to do with breathing, uh, relaxation, exercises uh, are also good. 
when you get into more advanced stages of cancer, then yes, then you need to probably, there, we have, I'm not going to say specialists, but we have physios that see those type of patients more. Mm-hmm. Um, the na- what we do with patients changes based on on the the diagnosis. So someone in advanced stages of cancer, for example, we can't, like I said, we can't put machines on, which we wouldn't do for any cancer patient, mm-hmm. but we also would be very careful if we're going to do any release therapy or, or massage therapy and stuff like that when we have cancer. So the, the options for, for treatment are limited mm-hmm. in that sense. So we fall back to activity based on what you can tolerate. I know that you also, um, you're a certified, is it acupuncturist or is it dry needle? Both. Both? Okay. Yeah. Are you an acupuncturist in the traditional sense? Like no, no. So acupuncture falls into two categories. So you have your traditional Chinese medicine, mm-hmm. which is acupuncture for weight loss, smoking sensation, fertility, liver problems, heart problems, diabetes, mm-hmm. asthma, like so all that kind of stuff. Uh, the phys- uh, when a physiotherapist practices acupuncture, we are practicing within the scope of what physiotherapy would do. So our acupuncture is to treat back pain or muscle pain or uh, tendon pain or inflammation. That's what we do uh, our acupuncture for. So if it's something a physio would do, then we do the acupuncture to do what a physio does. Mm-hmm. For okay. treatment, if that makes sense, yeah, yeah, right? No, that makes Physios sense. don't treat diabetes mm-hmm. in the sense of lower your blood sugar. We treat that, you know, people with diabetes, but I'm not treating the diabetes directly. So I can't do acupuncture to control your glucose or yeah. blood insulin level. Okay. But would, because you were mentioning before how you can't use TENS, you can't use ultrasound on people who um, have cancer, would acupuncture for inflammation or, or joint stiffness? Yes, so happen? yes, so so maybe the only uh, modality that can be used for people with cancer, active cancer or past cancer, uh, is acupuncture. So acupuncture is a safe modality to, to, to do with people uh, even with active cancer uh, and definitely for people post-cancer. Acupuncture is known to help reduce pain. Uh, it will actually help uh, increase range of motion. Uh, more importantly, it actually controls um, a lot to do with energy conservation or, or uh, the amount of energy that you have so different acupuncture points may um, uh, calm down the, the body uh, and then mm-hmm. it can also activate muscles or activate energy it's the yin and yang inside uh, the body um, so if someone is having a very uh, hard time sleeping because their brain is very active and all and you know they're thinking about a whole bunch of different things acupuncture is known to calm things down so you can sleep a little bit better likewise if you have very low energy uh, very lethargic and you just feel you don't feel like getting up acupuncture sometimes some of the points that we choose can actually be used to energize you uh, and give you that little pep in your step acupuncture seems like it also helps ease anxiety from what mm-hmm. you're saying so do they have any programs that you're aware of where they actually have a certified acupuncturist at the cancer treatments for anyone who's having severe anxiety during oh. their their chemo um that i don't know that i don't know i'm sure th- i'm sure there are people who have built practices around specifically doing that yeah. um but i don't know of any to be honest but i mean if someone came in here and they had they were at, you know cancer and all that stuff but when i was taking my courses and trained in acupuncture um one of the main modules that they had were acupuncture for the cancer patient uh so there's there is a need for it uh, mm-hmm. and i'm sure there's a practice out there it's just a matter of finding it the other issue is like you know cancer is is in and the way that we are in western medicine um needs to be treated with recognized western medicine you know like if we're talking about in a hospital or in a cancer uh treatment ward or you know they're they tend to fall back on the western recognized medicine acupuncture still is considered alternative or eastern medicine may not be as recognized not even just by doctors i'm talking by the government mm-hmm. by you know just health health professionals in general mm-hmm. in in north america final question do you have any piece of advice for anybody who's been having let's say they're they're looking to um to live a better lifestyle and um what would be some advice to help motivate them to not give up essentially so we're talking about someone in particular who has cancer no, or no, just just in general just or in general. so we- yeah so i mean it's the same that we tell everybody else like in order to live a healthy lifestyle it's it's a lifestyle change that you have to make and it doesn't have to be a huge 
uh, you don't have to make huge, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, um, commitments to change lifestyle. A lot of people think, oh, okay, I got to go to gym five, six days a week for two hours to lift weights and all that stuff. It doesn't have to be that. It's as simple as park a little bit further away in the mornings to get an extra 50 steps one way, take the stairs instead of an elevator, um, cut down on on fast food and takeout food. You can still eat it, just, you know, maybe one meal a week or something start 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 with small changes and sort of grow from there it doesn't take a lot to make a, a, a lot of a change um but most people who start making that change start to notice those changes um and it's it's not an on off thing either so just because you know every new year someone says oh i'm gonna go to the gym am i gonna do this uh, and they expect oh, i've been going here for two months and i don't see any change um it's it needs to be a lifelong commitment but it has, it's very small changes in order for that to happen. Um, and the benefits totally outweigh what could happen. So, I mean, we've all had uh, friends or family who, who start to gain a little bit of weight and then you get to a certain age and now everybody has high blood pressure that starts off with that and then maybe some heart issues and then, you know, worst case scenario, there could be unrelated issues like, like cancer or maybe a neuro issue. There are certain things that we can't control, but for the most part, if we can't control it, then why not? Um, take care of your body right the first time because you only got one shot and one body to to take care of so take care of it properly um, but it all starts with smaller changes so talk to your healthcare professional physiotherapist about making those changes and, and everybody's always willing to help out uh, if that's what the route that you want to take perfect thank you so much you are welcome <laughs>